Okay, so now, uh, with the crate, this is the situation we're up to. Uh, imagine that, not on it yet. I've got to do next. Okay, so firstly, you may want to just plain tops of your uh, crates just to get them all flush and nice. Okay, so uh, for this, you could use a hand plane, a block plane, whatever you have. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it on a uh, the planer. But yes, okay, so now we're going to move on to the next stage. And for this, you're going to need to cut out some pieces of wood. Here are mine, just here. Okay, so um, I don't know if you knew this or not, but this project is from recycled stuff. So this used to be the train set in a house, the legs and stuff. Uh, this is the curtain pole, which used to run across the room, uh, with the curtain just to fasten onto, which is fine. So I've taken this down, because we've got the cur curtains down. I've cut it into the required length. Uh, for this, you will have different uh, sizes because if you're choosing a gap, uh, if your gap is slightly different to mine, this is when this block will change. Okay, so all you want to do is, firstly, put a flush against the bottom. If you are making multiple ones of these, you may want to put this slightly below or slightly higher so that they can stack. But because I'm making one, that's um, this is the way I'm going to do it. Okay, so you want to just mark on with a pencil, uh, put your piece flush towards there, mark down with a pencil so you, you're ne so you know where you're going to uh, put your bead of glue so you're not going to uh, place it unnecessarily where you have to sand later. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to knock this into there. Okay, so firstly, that way we have to see this. Okay, so I'm going to get my glue, bit empty this glue, I'm just going to put it in the gap there where the wood is going to go. Okay, so I've done that now. Uh, just wipe off the fingers, that's helpful. Right, okay, so now you want to get uh, some pins. For this, I am using 30mm power pins. Um, so the top tip, not uh, making them. Uh, break your wood, and it's just to knock the bottom of them so they're not as sharp. So you'll put up a metal block, I'm just using my vise for this, the metal on vise, and just hit the top of it. So that makes the point not sharp so it doesn't break through your wood as much. You want to place your piece of wood roughly where it's going to go, and you want to decide where you're going to knock the pins in. So I'm doing it about a centimetre from the edge, about a centimetre from the other edge, it's about square. Uh, make a point, push it in, to start it off. Okay, and you're going to do that for the rest of the other four pins. Okay, so now we have knocked them in, we're just going to place it onto the position where it's going to go, make sure it's flat against the bottom, which it is, and just knock the pins in. Knock the outside pins in first, because these are easier to get to. Make sure you don't hit it on the edge like I did then and bend it. I bent it back. Not very clever this. So I'm going to take this one out because I've hit it wrong. So for this, you can use your hammer, the little spiky bit, and just put it over the pin and pull it out. So there we have it guys, we're going to put the pin in there in a second, and there we go. Okay so now guys you can see we have got the uh, crate, this is not pinned yet, see these the top two layers uh, can come off, 
just a bit tricky to get them off because uh, well, the pins, uh, the pins, the uh, lot of feet, whatever you want to call them in. See, I'm taking that top bit off now. I'll take this side off again. Okay, so that's what we're up to now. That's all glued and done. So I'm going to put this on, top layer. Find out the margin of the gap that I'm using. Then I'm just going to simply nail that side onto here like I've done to this before. Okay, so hi guys, this is the stage we are at. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this clamps on here because I, I forgot to put a pin in or ran out of pins. Uh, so that can be sorted out later. Uh, a few of the pins started to bend, there's nothing to do about that. Because, well, there is, but nothing I'm going to do. Uh, it adds character, if anything, so yeah. So I'm going to sand this down. Uh, apply an inkjet printer, which I saw Steve Ramsey do. And uh, also apply a coat, not a coat, a uh, finish, which I'm probably going to use a dye called Old English Oak. Okay, so now guys, as you can see, this is all stained. The stains I used for this were this one, called Anti Pine, and this slightly newer one, called Coloran Wood Dye, or English, English Light Oak. So I used a mixture because one of them was running out, so I decided to use that. And that one gives it a bit of a darker look, so if you look at it at different places, especially there, you can see that some bits are a tiny bit lighter and some bits are a tiny bit darker. Right, at this stage, I've dyed it, I've applied uh, my ink jet printer uh, writing. I will do, be doing a video on how to do this specifically, but all I've done is get flowers, a little main thing on the side, my name, this side up flowers again and on the other side a fragile sign. Okay so now uh, because this is for flowers and some flowers are probably bigger than other flowers I'm going to design like a second la layer so that um, I can hire up or make, drop it down depending on what type of flowers. Okay so I've cut these little pieces I'm going to go in there, uh, I've cut these pieces, I'm going to go across there and get it in like that then I'm going to build a long section with these pieces, which are not cut, and then you'll be able to lift it out and in uh, whenever you want to hire up the crate. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. This is the end product a crate. Um, I made this little adjustable shelf so it can go in there so that I can adjust the flower height. Okay, so remember to check out my next project, which will be how to make these lovely mat holders with a green felt backing on.